And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You gotta need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. one 800 800 866 Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. Of all places, I heard this piece of news on the CNBC Cable Network. Now, I can't say that I'm surprised, but I think the... Uh, the folks at a company called Live Nation, everybody in the radio business, the record business, the concert business knows who Live Nation is. If you've ever bought a concert ticket, you might have seen that name, Live Nation. All of the folks at Live Nation are just shocked. Do you know the uh, folks at Live Nation tried to make a uh, precedent-setting deal? I'll break it down for you. Fact is that, uh, as you know, the record industry is in not quite ruins yet, but it's well on its way. People don't go to record stores anymore. Remember Tower Records? Remember uh, West Hollywood, Virgin Megastore? Remember (laughs) the whole concept of going to the record store has gone out the window. I mean, record stores are going the way of the dodo bird. It's absolutely true. So uh, a number of artists have tried a bunch of things to uh, find other ways to get their product to you, other ways that would be more profitable or relevant. If they can't sell as many records, perhaps they can cut out some of the middlemen. And uh, was it Radiohead that uh, gave away their CD, gave it away? You know, you just uh, pay what you think it's worth. By the way, you notice they only did that once. (laughs) Quite the experiment. There was a performer from the 60s and 70s named Kenny Rogers. You probably remember best for making uh, roasted chicken in the 90s. (laughs) But he was a... uh, Originally a top 40 performer and then a country music performer for many years. And uh, when he was no longer relevant in terms of uh, radio station airplay and record sales through traditional record companies, uh, Kenny Rogers, who's a very good businessman, uh, said, that's it. I'm not doing any deals with record companies anymore. He set up his own website. He recorded his own albums and sold them on his own website. And from what I hear, even though the cost of the CD was way less than what they charge for records at a record store, he apparently made a fortune just making and selling his own CDs online. So people are looking for other ways to do this. Because uh, the idea of going to the record store and spending nineteen ninety nine or twenty four ninety nine on a CD, I mean, that's that's a figment of somebody's imagination now. Nobody's doing it. Uh, And no matter uh, how much you try to say uh, people are not doing it or iTunes is a big success, there's still people on college campuses using peer-to-peer networks like BitTorrent, downloading entire CD collections and what have you. That's what people are doing. That's what people are doing. Much to the consternation of the people who invested in these record companies. So Live Nation, which is not a record company, it's a concert promoter decided to make a deal with Madonna. Paying her, if I recall correctly, uh, somewhere in the eight figures uh, to not only uh, do a concert tour or several, 
uh, but to also be her promoter and to also be, if I recall correctly, her record company. In other words, Madonna would record CDs for Live Nation. The CDs would be sold at, like, Live Nation venues where Madonna's performing. And they just paid her millions and millions of dollars for this deal. And, of course, all the trade papers were saying this is precedent-setting, this is fantastic, isn't this great? They're trying something, you know, maybe that's what we need in this business, that you are owned top to down from uh, uh, whether it's your management or whether it's your touring uh, 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 company or whether it's uh, your uh, record deal, whatever. It's all one company. It's all one entity. So according to CNBC today, uh, Live Nation has a concert tour coming up for Madonna. And one of the uh, markets where she's going to be performing live concerts is Los Angeles. And I heard today that Madonna, now 49, she'll be 50 next year. Uh, Madonna, half of all tickets, actually more than half of all tickets, unsold. Unsold. Madonna, now a dried up old prune, a turkey neck, an irrelevant old bag. Like some aging hooker still out there on the stage. Uh, <laughs> trying to appeal to whatever remaining gay males and women in their 50s who used to be in their 20s when Madonna first came out. And that, frankly, uh, at least the uh, the 50-year-old female uh, part of the audience, let's face it, they never went to record stores anyway, not since they were in their teens. And they probably couldn't download an album if they tried. And chances are they're not going uh, to any uh, downtown venues or any uh, any place in the big city because, you know, they, they drive with a big SUV out in Rancho Santa Margarita and what have you. And uh, driving into the city to come watch Madonna is something you reminisce about, uh, well, you know, over at Starbucks with your friends from high school. We're now all 50. <laughs> but it's not something you'd actually, you know, tart yourself up and drive into town for, apparently. And uh, I must say that uh, I don't begrudge anybody's success, except in the case of Madonna. I, as a straight male, I always uh, had a problem with her, something about her appearance, something about her attitude, something about uh, her performance. She certainly was not one of the great singers of our time. And uh, I don't know how to explain it, but I'm kind of enjoying knowing that Madonna can't even sell out a venue in Los Angeles, that more than half the tickets have gone unsold. And they must be panicking trying to put a good face on this. I'm sure the phones are ringing here at the office right now. Could you ask him to stop talking about this, please? Could you tell him to stop saying that Madonna's concerts in Southern California are, are more than half unsold? Could you get him to stop saying that, please? Please tell him to stop saying that Live Nation's concerts with Madonna are not selling. Please, could you go into the studio and ask him to talk about something else? <laughs> but I'm not going to talk about something else. I love seeing that dried up old prune continuing to shrivel up. Kind of like the Wicked Witch of the West. You just gotta love it. Don't you love it? Jam. Like is 1-800-5800-86. So um, I underestimated the Madonna deal. The Madonna deal is for $120 million over 10 years. At the end of this deal, she'll be almost 60 years old. Old. Oh boy. And uh, says here in the original story that, um, oh yes, it's all about music and music related businesses. The Madonna brand, albums, touring, merchandising, fan club, website, DVDs, music related television and film projects, associated sponsorship agreements. That's what it says here. More than half the tickets for her L.A. concerts are unsold. What do you think? 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. It's Gus on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Father, how are you? Doing okay, sir. You know, you know what? Uh, I think I think Madonna should have, uh, instead of being uh, been put in uh, Live Nation uh, for a concert, I think she, she should have been put on uh, 
sex in the city as the head of the turkey neck. I mean. <laughs> she, you know what? She could have played like the mother of Kim Cattrall or something. I'm telling you. I mean, like, I think I think Madonna's career has already been long gone. I mean, if she was a uh, quote unquote such a hard art, uh, hot artist, I mean, I would assume that uh, her tickets would have sold sold out by this point. But uh, I guess I guess numbers speak for themselves, don't they? Huh? I mean, Neil Diamond, who hasn't had a hit record in 20 years, he <laughs> sells out when he comes to LA. You know, it's. It, I mean, it's it's your typical turkey neck. I mean, they just don't know when to say when. It's like, you know, you you, you got to tap out at one point in your life. Well, you that's know? the other thing. You know, uh, the thing about Madonna, back in the days of doing movie, the movie Desperately Seeking Susan and stuff. You know, she was fresh and young, and of course, you wanted to see her naked and all that. But let's face it, when you're a dried up old turkey neck, <laughs> there comes a time you have to back away from the microphone. Oh yeah, that's for sure. You know, it's like you say. You know. Uh, you might drive a, a, you know, a 98 Lexus, but it's a 98 Lexus, you know what I mean? Uh, it's, it's not the same as it was when you first bought it. So, uh, I don't know. I think she should have retired a long time ago, and uh, I don't even, I don't know what... what, what well, you the, know what? You know the story on the 98 Lexus. Everybody else has driven it. <laughs> yeah, you might you might want to get a Carfax report on that, ain't That's you? exactly right. <laughs> You'll see if that oh, odometer has been rolled back. Oh, man, yeah. The, the leather seats might be a little cracked, too, huh? That's exact. Well, not to mention the stains. <laughs> oh, dad. <laughs> I, didn't, I, I just wanted to say, too, um, I didn't get a chance to uh, tell you or send you an email, but I uh, want to say happy Father's Day. I'm proud to uh, be a longtime listener, and um, I just wanted to congratulate you on your success in uh, your new home in Santa Barbara. And um, what can I say? Uh, you're number one for a reason, and... Uh, Wondering if you could take me out uh, African tribal style. African tribal style, of course I can. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Madonna, finished. Finished. Coming to SoCal. You would think, I mean, even Cher does well. You would think there'd be enough gay men and aging females. Cougars, MILFs, GILFs, GILFs. You'd think there'd be enough of them to come see Madonna, but not even them. 1-800-GILFs. So first you're a MILF, then you're a GILF, then you're a GILF. It's John on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, what's up, Tom? Not How's much, John. You know, the music business itself, for I guess, is about eight years, has just been in such a steady decline. I mean, look at the deal that went on with Metallica and Napster. And, I mean, Live Nation, they should have known last year, after the whole OzFest thing, where they had to get with the Osbournes and give away tickets to make more money. Than yeah. they would have actually selling tickets. I mean, I was out in Glen Halen last year, and it was the most packed I've ever seen it. Wow. Uh, this year, uh, Rockstar Energy Drink is throwing the Rockstar Mayhem Tour. You know, heavy metal show. They got lawn tickets going for $6.66. <laughs> there you go. And that right there, it's just an incentive to get more concert goers into the venue so they can make more off of merchandise. Right. Well, it's like Gillette giving away razors so they can sell you cartridges for four bucks a piece. There you go. I go to concerts at least a good five, six times a month. And whenever I go to concerts, whether it's at the Whiskey, the Key Club, the House of Blues, I'd rather buy my CDs there from the artists themselves than, you know, spending. Well, that's what Madonna is banking on here. So when exactly. you when you take your gay uncle downtown to see Madonna, that the two of you will stop by and pick up a CD. Yes, because that's exactly what I'm going to do. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I got to get back into work, Tom. Can you take me out, uh, Bill O'Reilly style? I certainly can. I can't do it. Okay. We'll do it live. Okay. We'll, no. we'll do it live. Do it live! I can, I'll write it and we'll do it live! Right. F***ing thing sucks! <laughs>
By the way, you know, the O'Reilly Factor for Kids is available on Amazon.com. There's the man you want telling you how to raise your kids right there. There he is. 1-800-5800. I like giving that free plug every time. I mean, if you need help raising your children, there he is. You know, when they're not interning for him, <laughs> he'd like to tell you the proper way to raise your children. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. It's James on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, James. Uh, calling from Long Beach. Yes. Uh, focusing on the, or, about the Madonna situation. Um, you said half tickets are unsold. More than um, half, according to C CNBC, more than half the Madonna tickets in Southern California are unsold. Yeah, you got to remember, too, that uh, half of those that are sold are probably sold by scalpers. They're going to be giving those away. Yeah, exactly. They're going to be losing money on that. Maybe the scalpers, uh, and by the way, we don't really have scalpers in SoCal. We have ticket brokers. Oh, uh, I'm sorry, ticket brokers. <laughs> I think they're more sophisticated than you think. I think they know Madonna's finished. I'd be willing to bet uh, very few of the pros, I mean the big name uh, ticket brokers, are buying up Madonna tickets. <laughs> but yeah, I just wanted to comment on that. Can you uh, take me out, Kobe stuff? I certainly can. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Oh. It's one eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom Daryl on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello. Hi. I'm an, I'm an actual music journalist, critic, whatever you want to call it, and I actually think she had some, a few good songs over the years, but she's never had any vision or balls when it came to touring. She has to do all the crap with the dancers and big productions because maybe she never had the confidence to do a smaller venue. No, you know what? She never had the talent. This is not one of the great singers of our time. I mean, you look, look at like somebody like a Springsteen. He has no sponsorship. He doesn't sell out every day, but he's filling a lot of arenas. He's filling stadiums in Europe because it's the real deal. Well, uh, the other thing about him is that nobody ever went to see Bruce Springsteen because they wanted to see maybe his boob would pop out of his bra on stage. Exactly. And now, if uh, Madonna's boob popped out of her bra, they'd have to call a geologist. <laughs> archaeologist. An archaeologist, that's right. All right, well, thank you for your time, Tom. I appreciate it. Thank you, Daryl. We're talking about Madonna. Madonna coming up with live concerts in Southern California, according to CNBC. More than half the tickets are unsold. She's done. Scott on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi. Uh, Tom, you know, first of all, I, I just want to say, long-time listener, love you. Always been there since the day they kicked you the curb at KFI. But here's what I want to start with. You there? No, I left the room. Okay. Moms. Moms. My <laughs> wife is reliving her life through my daughter. And so she is there paying the bills but wants to see what she didn't see without my daughter being there. So she's the one who's buying those tickets. Uh, but, but nobody's buying those tickets. They're half unsold. A lot of my friends wait till the last minute. They go there and so on and so over. Two, why are the Rolling Stones still relevant? I mean, they're, they're Keith Richards looks like the Crypt Keeper, uh, Turkey Necks. Because it never had to do with uh, what the Rolling Stones looked like for a lot of the audience. Certainly the guys who like the Rolling Stones couldn't care less what Mick Jagger or Keith Richards looks like. The, but the, they're, they're, they're no Dean Martin. They're no Frank Sinatra. I mean, they're Are you kidding? Have you ever seen the Rolling Stones in concert? Yes, I have. I was at Dodger Stadium. I saw the... Now, I agree, with, I agree with you that at this point, they're not making any new hits, and they are irrelevant in terms of uh, contemporary music. They're, they're but irrelevant. they have got a body of work. Here's a band that can stay on stage for three hours, and you know every song they play. And on top of that, uh, you like them for their musicianship. And their performance, not for the way they looked. Okay, point three. She's in great shape. You're talking about pony. She's a turkey day. neck with. Women. She's a you turkey know, neck with crow's feet, and and come on, she is not what she was. She 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 resembles to me an aging hooker, uh, you know, strutting across the stage. It's it's not a pretty picture. Why why do people like Timberlake and all these other people want to jump on the bandwagon? Did you see that caddy that that, that uh, eye candy uh, video? For Timberlake, it's another gig. He's a producer. 
I just think that there's a lot of people out I'm there. I'm sure if Phil Spector weren't in custody, he'd be jumping in, too. <laughs> there's a lot of people out there who still who have children, unlike you, who want to go there and share the experience of seeing these things as they grow up. Well, then where are they? Why aren't they buying the tickets? Why, why, why? Gas prices? Uh, yeah. uh, oh, it's all about gas prices. Yeah, well, uh, the NBA finals were sold out, I'll tell you that. Um, gas prices are not. I'm 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 pretty much done. And by the way, I saw question. the I saw the Rolling Stones at the Hollywood Bowl. I think it was two years ago. It was sold out. The tickets in the middle of the place, not even towards the front, were over four hundred dollars a piece, and people were happy to pay it. Okay, but what about all these old the artists like Rod Stewart? Any of these people? I mean, Ever, have, by the way, I'm glad you mentioned Rod Stewart because I I got dragged to a Rod Stewart concert at some point in the last five years. Both. Uh, it was one third empty, uh-huh. and the people who were there were a bunch of eight. They was the, these are uh, these are milfs you wouldn't want a milf. You know what I'm talking about? These yes. were like all aging women uh, trying to squeeze into tight jeans and tight t-shirts, thinking they're going to meet Rod, and they'll take whatever leftovers there are. And, and it was pathetic. These women must have got the AARP discount to get uh-huh. in and see him. Okay, but there is one point here. She didn't have to pick a venue of 55,000, 65,000 people. She could have either easily filled out the Coliseum or Forum or, or any of these places. She, you know, took a uh, – Live Nation took a gamble and say, hey, blow, we can maybe sell 65,000 tickets here. Hey, but again, uh, at one point, Madonna could sell 65,000 tickets, now only in her dreams. At one point, at one point. So, I mean – Yeah, oh. 1985, Absolutely. Okay, but to I me, mean, it's Live Nation is the whore here. No, 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 no. Uh, but put it this way: all businesses, if they're being done right, they're all whores. That's what they should be. And if I own stock in a company, I want them to be whores. That's you the bottom line. Stock in Live Nation, can't you? What's that? You can buy stock in Live Nation. Yeah. I well, I, I, I don't know if Clear Channel owns Live Nation or they've spun off as an independent company again. I'm not sure. Not sure. I think they were once owned by Clear Channel. Hang on a second here, Scott Sergio. What did you want to say to Scott? Hey, how's it going, Tom? Long, long time, go? first time. Uh, Scott, you're retired. Uh, Madonna's a relic of a bygone era. Her music was crap. It was crap back then. It's crap now. She was got lucky that MTV was around. She made some videos, spent some money. Some little girls. I saw respect her for that. She's she a great whore. Great, great job. Like bought it all up. Great job. Great whore. Great. She did great work. To horrible, 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 horrible stuff. stuff. It doesn't stand the test of time. It's crap. If she wasn't Elvis, she's not the Beatles. She's not John Lennon. She's not the Rolling Stones. It's crap. I'm yeah, glad. That's a good, very good point. Dancing to Madonna, to me, is like dancing the Macarena. You no, know what I'm saying? It's, it's time, Tom, just it's dated. Time. It's very important now. Because oh, started. It's everybody's started. reinvented now. The oh, no, it. everybody is not reinvented. That's not true. Everybody has not been successfully reinvented. Tony Bennett has successfully reinvented himself many times. Madonna did it back in the 80s and the early 90s. But you know what? There comes a time if your career is built on being the little coquette, the little uh, the impish, slutty girl on stage. Not even attractive. Guess what? When you when you're hitting your fiftieth birthday, it just you get you don't buy it anymore. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, not Christina Aguilera, but uh, Britney Spears. Is she is she any worse than Madonna? Madonna is more. Is, is she than worse than Madonna? Ten times worse. Ten times worse. Her, I, her music even more. I fun. think they're both awful. Uh, Christina Aguilera, who is a butterface, at least has a great voice. Okay, I'm I'm there. I'm home with that, but. But, but Britney Spears or people, my, my daughter, who is now nine years old, she still looks up to these people like Hannah Montana, Miley Cyrus. I mean, I want to turn off the radio because I'd be a slut. Just turn off the radio and keep her, keep her away from that stuff. It's all crap. It's all crap, but I can't deal with that because I have a, a, a child that's growing up who watches these things. By the way, has your daughter seen Miley Cyrus on MySpace? Yeah. <laughs> what, do you mean the, the pictures from Vanity Fair? Not, no, no, no. There were some uh, snapshots of her going around the Internet. Oh, yeah. But anyway, my point being... She's very Madonna sorry Madonna in case your daughter saw those, herself. by the way. What's that? At least Madonna was be able to reinvent herself three or four times. Who can do that? Way back when. That's right. Back in the day. Who can... I mean, okay, back Frank in the day. Frank Sinatra reinvented himself, too. But uh, you know what? Not much of a concert tour for Frank these days. We're not done yet. <laughs> uh, how about... And, and, uh, and, to, and to keep on compounding that, um, Tom, there is a, a, do, a new venue for people called Vegas. I mean, they were talking in the paper. Oh, that's good. About, yeah, you I know what? Maybe she could follow Bette Midler at Caesars Palace and Elton John. You're right. 
and and that's just fine, you know, because uh, because that brings in a dough. It could because there are plenty of gay men who want to get away for the weekend and see a concert, and I think it's fantastic. Eighteen thousand people at the Hollywood Bowl would. Madonna could fill. Maybe 50,000 at Dodger Stadium would be a problem. Uh, you know what? I even doubt that she could fill the Hollywood Bowl. You think so? I do, because the crowd that goes to the Hollywood Bowl, definitely not Madonna fans. I don't want to take up any more of your time, but I really like speaking with you. Hey, wait, hang on one second oh, here, Scott, because I got one more here. Eddie, what did you want to say to Scott? <laughs> I think this guy is, you know, the first thing that really got me is he's a longtime Tom Micus listener. That dude is not a Tom Micus listener at all. Definitely not. He's whack. Tom. Madonna sucks. Tom, Daryl Gates kicking you to the curb today at uh, PCH and Sunset. I've told you the story before. God, oh my God. Get up. <laughs> Stop listening to the radio. <laughs> Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-866. It's... The Tom Likas Show from Hollywood at 1 800 5 800 Tom. That's our telephone number. Ah, oh, yes. That wrinkled old hag, Madonna. Concerts coming to Southern California. More than half the tickets are unsold. Matt on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, how you doing, Tom? I'm doing okay. So good. Uh, one other thing I think that's hurting her ticket sales is that the prices she's charging. Uh, with her last tour, I paid 200 bucks, which was the cheapest selection of seats, and I was second row from the top of the forum. And I'm her target demographic. I'm a gay male, and there's no way in hell I'd pay to see her again. Really? Yeah, I mean, I heard it was a good show. I couldn't see it, so I didn't know. But, uh, yeah, after paying 200 bucks, I'm like, screw that. I'll just buy a $10 DVD of the concert, and I'll, you know, I'll get a better view. Now, what is it at this point in, in her uh, career that fascinates some gay men? Uh, I think it's just the type of music. It's, you know, it's the upbeat thing. She also has a very pro-gay attitude and everything. So, you know, I think they kind of, the community kind of clings to that. But So yeah, does Harvey Firestein, said... but if he had a concert, you wouldn't go see it. <laughs> no, no in hell. But, yeah, I like, like somebody said earlier, you know, you uh, you can look to other people. You know, Christina Aguilera has a great voice, you know, but Madonna's not about the voice. I guess it's just about, you know, who produces her music, so. Well, uh, I guess uh, who produces her music has always been the key because she has no voice, not much of a singer. Exactly. A lousy yeah. actress. How many hit movies was she in? I, I try to avoid Madonna movies at all costs. There we go. And you're gay. Yeah, I don't know if I'm defective or what, but I just never got that into it, I guess. Now, are you also into the share thing or it's just Madonna? I'm sorry? Are you also into the share thing or just Madonna? No, I think uh, shares for the older gays. I'm not sure. The about. older gays. Yeah. Uh, thanks a lot, Tom. Can you blow me up? I certainly can. I'm glad we're keeping those demographics straight. Uh, Madonna is for the younger gays, and Cher is for the older gays. And Bette Midler is for your gay grandfather. That's right. Yes. Kelly writes in and says, Tom, you are such a hater. Don't be jealous of Madonna just because your life sucks. Don't rip on someone better than you. She has more than you will ever have in your whole life. Get a set and man up. <laughs> Jeffrey writes and it says Aretha Franklin and Cher had talent. I think Aretha Franklin still has talent. Tell you what. 1-800-5800-TOM. By the way, if you want to email us, send it to Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. I do read this stuff while I'm on the air. Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. Uh, Priscilla writes in and says, okay, then why does Barbara Streisand sell out constantly in her old age? That's because if you like that kind of music, Barbara Streisand was one of the greatest singers of the last hundred years. Now, that's not my music. I don't particularly like that kind of music. But even, here's how good Barbara Streisand is as a singer. Even not liking that kind of music, anybody can hear what a great voice she has. And it doesn't matter how old she gets, her voice is still remarkably good. That's the difference. Uh, Barbara Streisand uh, was never about what she looked like. She was always homely. And, 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 and with that face... <laughs> 
uh, to, to have been so successful and so popular uh, speaks to her talent. Madonna, on the other hand, once the body is gone, there's no reason to go see her. Got, you understand the difference there, dear? Thank you, Priscilla. Mm-mm-mm. Tom, this is uh, Michael Casey. Got a telephone call there? Oh. Let me see somebody going to pick up the phone. <laughs> hey, we got a doorbell here, too, now. Tom, you only have the facts half right regarding Madonna's ticket sales. It was an error on the part of Live Nation, perhaps, to put Madonna's show on at Dodger Stadium, a venue that holds over 50,000 people. When people pay to see Madonna, they want to see the show. Well, they have big screens now. They've got HD uh, screens and stuff for you to watch a concert when you're at the concert. Most seats at Dodger Stadium will provide concert goers with virtually no view. Why did Bruce Springsteen sell out Dodger Stadium? For Christ's sake, Kiss sold out Dodger Stadium. Rolling Stone sold out Dodger Stadium. Just amazing. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Michael on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello. Um, hey, Tom. Love your show. Thank you. man calling in. And as much as Madonna may be a pop culture icon, she's been nothing but a leech when it comes to sucking the talent out of younger and more in tune people around for her entire career, starting from the very beginning. And um, I think just her trying to sell tickets to this enormous stadium is just an example of, of how desperate she is to constantly want more and need more, and she's failing at it. And to show how she is still relevant, that's clearly what she's trying to do. Well, yeah, exactly. I was uh, using the LA Times as a scrap paper when I was doing some work in the backyard, and I had to keep staring at that ridiculous ad of her wearing this top hat like the Mad Hatter with her body held in place by a ton of fishnets. And I was just like, you know, this really is someone's grandma by all age purposes. And she's prancing around trying to look like she's 20 years old. And why? it's like, accept who you are, accept all the stages of your life, and maybe focus on that, and people might be able to relate to your honesty and to support you as an artist. But she let go of that, you know, 25 years ago. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's like if your grandma decided to suddenly go uh, get dressed up a trashy lingerie and prance around like a hooker. It, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. And, you know, there have been times in her career when she's really been at the bottom. And she would find someone who was hot culturally, jump on their bandwagon, and use the Michael Ladder and keep on climbing. And the guy who commented about Justin Timberlake, you know, so desperate to work with Madonna, I I'm sure it's the other way around, easily. The Actually, he was, talking about, he was talking about Timbaland is who he was talking about. Yeah, you know, right, right. Anytime someone's hot, Madonna has grabbed onto them like, you know, a leech in a swamp and suck them for their energy and their usefulness. She did the same thing to Ricky Martin when he first came on the scene back in the early 90s. She, she does it to everyone. It's, she's making out with Britney Spears when Britney Spears was hot on the MTV Awards, running around on David Letterman's show when she was back in 88 when she was doing Speed the Plow and got the, probably the worst reviews of her life, taking uh, energy from Senator Bernhardt. And, and uh, she does it her whole career. I think you make some great points. Thank you for that, Michael. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. This is Luke on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tommy, how you doing, buddy? Doing okay. Hey, man, I just wanted to point out for all those people who are listening to Madonna or listening to um, is Hannah Montana and, and Miley Cyrus. Is that the same person? Hannah uh, Montana is played by Miley Cyrus. Okay, so basically, I'm in a band, and you know, we go out there and we play for fun. We play blues, we play like early Zeppelin, and I cannot believe how these little girls and I don't even know if Madonna writes her own songs, but I'm pretty sure she doesn't. Just like Britney Spears doesn't, just like Jessica Simpson doesn't. But I don't see how people are following into this mold of liking people who just have a good voice that maybe they can dance around the stage, when in reality they. Have have no talent other than having a good voice. I mean, there are thousands, if not millions of people in the United States that have a really good voice and can't write their own songs and they don't get a chance because, you know, they don't have money or they don't have fame. And I, I just think it's absolutely ridiculous how people are buying in to this crap that the record business is putting out there. I mean, I, I, I think it's sad to look at, at the music industry and, and what's happening with it and how, you know, a 16-year-old girl can sell out 
you know, a stadium when she's really not doing anything. She's putting two hours of work in an album and having producers and other musicians doing all their work for them. I, I just think it's absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. Well, I think the uh, public is on to it. Uh, Madonna is a turkey-necked old prune who is essentially irrelevant to most people today. Yeah. Oh, I, this just an opinion, music, folks. I, I don't know. Sorry? Does she write her own music, Madonna? I mean, I, I know she's wrote a couple, you know, written I, of her own songs. But I, I would have to guess that she occasionally writes songs but doesn't write most of them. Just a guess. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, that, that's just how it is. And, and with the way things are going, the record business will be out of business in, I, I would say, 10 years. And what you're going to see is a bunch of these Disney kids going out there who, you know, are, are cute little kids who, who have a good voice and can prance around the stage, make people happy. But in reality, they have nothing. They have nothing on anybody. And all the good music that should be coming out like it was in the 60s and the 70s, it, it, it's, it's, it's going to be it's going to be gone. Like we're going to lose it forever. It, it won't be there. Well, it'll so, be. I mean, you know where it's going to be? It's going to be on somebody's MySpace page, and 200 people will download this band, and 400 people will download another band. That's what you're going to have. Yeah. And exactly. nobody's going to make mean, any money. I don't know. I, 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 I'm i pretty humble, but I, I feel like I'm pretty good at guitar, and I, I can write some pretty good songs. Like, we play pretty good music. But I, I will never, I, I'm, I realize that I will never have a chance because I wasn't born into the Madonna family or I wasn't born into the, you know, the Disney family. And I will never have a chance because, you know, people aren't listening to good music. And these people are going out there playing shows and they're playing exactly what's on the album. Whereas, you know, Zeppelin would go out there and play for three hours and change every single one of their songs. Yeah, but guess what? The jam. people who grew up listening to Led Zeppelin are buying Hannah Montana records for their kids. It, it, that's, that's absolutely ridiculous. Like, uh, my father brought me up on, on the Beatles and Cream and, and Led Zeppelin. And I'm only 19 years old, and I've never, ever listened to Madonna. I've never listened to... Hannah Montana. I, I, I just, I, I don't buy it. I, I, I think it's absolutely... Well, you're not in the target crap. audience. It's uh, for the little sluts of the future. That, that's who's buying it. 11-year-old girls, 12-year-old girls, 13-year-old girls, and their parents. Yeah. No, it, it's sad. I mean, I, I have a niece who is uh, 8 years old, and she's wearing um, belly shirts. She's wearing the tight pants. And she's putting on makeup, and it's like, you know, where have your priorities gone? And, and I, I told my sister, I was like... You know where it is. Uh, uh, little job. girls little girls have figured out that in the future, giving it away is one way to get a hand. Yeah. Well, Tom, I, that's all I had to say. I just wanted to point that out. Um, yeah. I love you, man. Thank you so much, Robert, on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Hey. hey got a thing. I know most of these music critics... Anyway, seem to be when you see them on some of the publications, they're gay anyway. They just look gay. And, uh, you know, they force you to believe that Madonna, give her four stars or five stars in a new album. And I'm like, I go, I, I don't get it. I, I don't know why they're forced to believe that. I mean, they're stuck in an 80s time warp that let's uh, give her the 80s, that the 80s music was great. It wasn't. Every decade has bad music, period. And even the 80s did. I mean, I cannot stand it when they sit there and push that, that uh, U2 was a great band. They inspired everybody. No, they didn't. They also were, were beaten up by the people who were like 10 years older than teenagers, saying that they were, they're nothing like the uh, 70s rock, man. This 80s stuff is horrible. Oh, boy. Now a U2 hater gets into the mix. Our email address, Tom, at blowmeuptom.com. The Tom Likas Show.